campus of Westfield State University. This is 89.5 FM, WSKB, Westfield. I'm sorry, Peter. Joe, are you there? Good morning, Westfield. Welcome to Tiger Talk Live, all things Westfield Technical Academy. You <laughs> are in control to Major Tom. <laughs> in the flow with Rob and Joe. Good morning, Mr. Olari. Good morning. How are you? Doing great. Oh, you, you doing you, great? Yeah, you you look like you're in an awesome place. <laughs> Busy, getting a lot done. Getting a lot done. Got a lot going on. Oh, a lot in the hopper. But we're getting it done. Jeez, yeah. what it, what what isn't happening? MCAS Senior Week begins tomorrow. Sure. We got the pick senior picnic on Monday. Senior awards on Wednesday. Graduation next Thursday. It just it's all coming fast and furious. Yeah, I don't know where the year went. Next two weeks will be crunch time. So and then the dam will be. <laughs> The faucets will be turned off. One could only hope. It's amazing. One you know, could only hope. Busy we get. Somehow just... my spigot never completely runs dry. Well, that's but later anyway, of school. It's that's true. all right. Yeah, that's all right. You know, I have eternity to rest. I'll keep busy now. We've got a little kind of <laughs> mini career fair going on that's as right. we speak. Our 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 crack CTE director Peter Tulumus organized a a small career fair in house happening in the cafeteria. For our seniors who may be a little undecided on their postgraduate plans, so we've got representatives from MGM there, some of our local businesses and industries, the craft labor unions. Uh, is the DOT there? I can't remember. I believe so. I believe yes. so. So, yeah. so a lot happening today. Electrical union, uh, Westfield Electroplating, some like you said, some local businesses. So I think this is really cool because you know a lot of our, our seniors they're still, you know they're. Which is okay. They haven't planned, yeah, really. Which is okay. And um, this is just another opportunity that they can pursue. Okay not to know as long as, you, as, long as you're, you're still 
looking for some direction. And the nice thing about what they're doing is um, Pete has worked with our librarian to make sure their resumes um, are ready to go. So they're actually going to be passing out resumes um, as they circle around. So yep. Shout out to Donna Rollins, yeah. uh, arguably the, the best uh, librarian media specialist in the Westfield Public Schools. We're glad to call her our own. Sure are. All right. And a lot of businesses have been calling us, too. So, you know, that, that's good. We're on the map. They, they know, um, you know, I feel bad because we cannot, can't always fill their, their needs. But everything from little ice cream shops to major construction companies, you know, they're thinking of us now. So the challenge will be to, to fill those right. gaps. And that's not only at the local level. As you guys know, it's on the state level and the federal level. But... At least they're calling us, which yeah. is something that we, you know, we didn't have five and years ago. And not being able to pump people out fast enough is actually a good problem to have. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, people are taking them as fast as we can. I mean, manufacturing, it's the same situation in manufacturing, right? All of our kids, all of our kids have some place to go, and they'd take twice as many if we could make them. That's correct. So. Yep. Pleasure today to welcome back to the show uh, uh, someone who hasn't been with us for a few months, we have Assistant State Secretary of Education, Bob LePage, who is the master of all things CTE in the Commonwealth. He's been a very good friend to me and a good friend of the Academy. Uh, so, Bob, welcome back. It's great to have you back. Well, it's a pleasure to visit again and always to see and meet your students and learn of the great things they're doing and certainly see some of the employers that are giving them excellent opportunities and some of our local college friends who are providing those pathways to post-secondary opportunities for your terrific and students. Who is this, this lovely individual to your left, Mr. Olari? Well, we have um, Krista Oscalillo, who is a mentor at our school, but I'm excited um, just to have her here, here on campus because she has a, a new and exciting position with HCC. Um, and not to get into it too deeply, but many of our students can earn college credits through the coursework they take here if they meet a certain um, academic criteria. And they're able to articulate those credits if they, if they go to either STIC or HCC in, in our case. And, and um, Chris is with HCC. At, and I know you don't want to talk too much. You're just kind of here to observe and find out all the great things that are going on at the state level. But just to have a, a conduit from HCC on our campus on a regular basis and we're blessed because you already know the school, you already know the students, you kind of know what our mission and, and goals are. We know what HCC has to offer. Um, so it's cool to have you here today and to have you in this new role. And, you know, Bob had asked us before we went on air, you know, the, the, the challenge is to get our students, you know, we need to create a seamless pathway for them. And, a lot of times when we do that transition into post-secondary, it, it's not always seamless. There seems to be a little bit of some bumps and heaves. So I, I'm, I'm excited that I think you're going to kind of help pave that pathway and be a good conduit for these kids. So I'm, I'm excited. So welcome. Thank you. So when we last had John Bob, we were talking about sort of the initiation of the high-quality college and career pathway. Um, doings at the state level and maybe it'd be a good opportunity for us to sort of quickly review what that was all about with our listeners and then talk about where we are today i'm trying to remember when you were on last it's been a while so there's been a yeah. lot going on since you last you last joined us yeah so i can give you two or three updates um as you're aware um the Commonwealth has been very focused in the last two years at looking at strategies to increase pathway opportunities for all students. Your students are excellent examples of those who have participated in a structured process that ensures that they're getting um, rigorous and relevant technical and academic instruction, uh, alignment to career services, alignment to post-secondary partners, but unfortunately, in the Commonwealth, it's only about 20% of the students who really get that in a high school experience. So looking at those models through um, a very successful nationally competitive grant that the Commonwealth was able to secure from the Chief Counsel of School State Officers um, and J.P. Morgan, we have been working on building out alternative pathways. And so 
for many of the students here in Westfield who aren't part of the academy, but maybe at Westfield High or our friends over at Hoyoke High or South Adley High or whatever the school may be in the region or district in the region, many of those students haven't decided an occupation as your students. Most of your students, um, the student we met earlier when we came in, for example, has decided to go through a culinary program. So she made a conscious decision at some point of an interest in hospitality, maybe business, um, related to that. But for the other students in the Commonwealth, we needed to develop a system that allowed them to have a similar experience, maybe not at the vocational level, but at least aligning to the post-secondary thoughts of what majors align to what type of industry sectors. So in our innovation pathways that are new this year, we launched last year, um, went through the same designation process that we go for vocational program and have just recently designated our first four districts that will have innovation pathways. Um, those are opportunities that align to healthcare careers, manufacturing careers, professional and scientific careers, um, finance and, and business careers, where we know there's high demand in the Commonwealth. So, right. that so I was going to say these are areas that have been identified um, by the a number of state agencies, Executive Office of Ed, Labor, Housing and Economic Development as areas where there are critical skills gaps. Correct. So this, this strategy is being driven as part of the, as you mentioned, the skills cabinet that was created by um, Governor Baker um, very early in his days to deal with the skills gap. This is all about ensuring that we have opportunities to careers here in the Commonwealth. Um, it is reflective of a process that we went through where we did regional blueprints where um, school leaders, um, your superintendent, um, the community colleges, the universities, along with industry have d identified those particular sectors and those occupations that they want the Commonwealth to invest strategies and resources. By in. region, By correct? By region, so, yeah. So, so this is the Pioneer Valley region, which would be you know, from Connecticut to the border in Vermont, up the valley, what we would call as a right. local, the knowledge corridor <laughs> right. in Boston is the Pioneer <clears throat> Valley corridor. And so they got in this, in this corridor, it's very similar to others. So I think that's, I think that's important, an important um, characteristic to emphasize. Need is determined very locally. Um, you know, this isn't, this isn't about um, our state government far away from us in Boston who's making some kind of blanket assumption about what we need here. This is, this is really true to our lived experience. So that's, I think that's important. Yeah, what we're trying to do is have you, as, as communities in each of the region, tell us where you want to go, us to realize are there situations that everybody has in common, and in those cases, how do we deploy resources right. and tools? And in some situations, um, for example, in Pathways, instead of kind of the old model, which was you would try to define labor market information, try to define a need, and then get permission from the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. We're working to flip that and say, we all agree these are the areas. Give us proposals <laughs> related to that area. Right. And you know you're much closer to an approval process. Makes sense. So, you know, we're, our innovation pathways for uh, enrollment in 19, we have seven districts, we have four districts, I mean, we have four districts, we have three more districts that I think we'll get approved this summer. And we're working as well on our early college programs. And the early college programs are much more focused on bridging the gap of access, um, particularly in math and English, to be immersive programs to move students, again, from traditional high schools primarily into a bridge program into college. Right. Um, so we've designated our first five <clears throat> of those um, programs, and I very much anticipate in mid-July we'll probably complete another five to seven that um, have been in this process throughout the year. So we're working on building out these pathways. We'll have opportunities. We just announced and one of those applicants is Westfield yes. State, whom we partner with That's right. very closely regarding early college opportunities for our students here, our dual enrollment classes, stretch, stretch courses. Yep. And to congratulate our, our, co our quiet colleague down in the <laughs> corner, uh, Hoyo community was <clears throat> among the first in the state with Hoyo Public Schools. Um, 
so you know we're working on those strategies to just again um, in many ways recognize the great work being done in our traditional vocational programs either in comprehensive schools or in um, a technical academy kind of model or regional voc and say how do we echo that for other students because our, our students want to make an investment of their time either into the job market or into college that's better mm -hmm. informed and that's what I hear from parents across the Commonwealth. Well, Rob and I, how many times have we mentioned this on the show? You know, when, when I was getting ready to graduate from high school, I grew up in the trades, but there was no doubt that I was going to college whether or not I wanted to, even though my father was a plumber and had his own business. Yeah. Um, not that I was interested in becoming a plumber necessarily, but you're going to college. Okay, I got to college. What do you study? I studied what I liked, which was English. What are you going to do with it? I don't know. I guess I'll become a teacher. <clears throat> so there was all of this this hesitation, this uncertainty, other than you're going to just the end game was you're going to go to college. And then then what? You know, and that's sort of I guess that's sort of what um, all of these efforts are trying to do is to try to eliminate the uncertainty for folks. Yeah, I had a meeting with the folks from J.P. Morgan and the executives from the chief uh, state school officers a couple weeks ago. And um, it was part of a national convening. And, and one of the people in the room from J.P. Morgan was really great. He said, you know, 30 years ago, my parents told me you had to go to college. And they didn't really worry about what would happen on the other side. They figured I would figure it out. <laughs> he said, now, when I, in his case, when I had my first child, it was, you need to go to college. And then I want you to get a job because I don't want you to sleep on my couch <laughs> or in my basement when you graduate. And he said, now my last one is just getting to high school. <laughs> and my fear is not for them just to go to college. It's I don't want them to go to college, then sleep on my basement, yeah. and then have a big student loan that they're trying to pay off while they're in my basement. So this evolution of the time and the expense of college. And on the same time, the fact that there are so many career opportunities if you're qualified and prepared. And that's what we're trying to do is say, how do we really make sure students, when they get to a great um, higher ed institution, whether it's Westfield State or Hoyle Community or UMass or Springfield Tech, that they know what they want to do when they get there so that our great employers have that talent pool when, right. when they come out. All right, Producer Pete has given me a signal that it's time to take a break. So we'll ask you all to stay tuned. We're going to pay some bills and we'll be back. Bright shiny beads, sparkles, spangles, your heart will sing, singling, wearing bubbles, bangles, and beads. You'll glitter and gleam, so make somebody dream. That someday he may buy you ring, ring, a ling, a. I have heard that's where it leads. Wearing baubles, bangles, and beads. Someday 
He may, he may buy you a ring, ring, a ring, a I've heard that that's where it leads. If you wear it, Bobble. Them coo coo beats. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Wally Computer Associates, one of the largest technology providers in North America. Headquartered in Southwick, Wally provides all of the products and services that you'd expect from a world class technology partner to schools, colleges, businesses, as well as state and local governments and agencies. Wally Computer Associates, meeting all of your technology needs on the web at WCA.com. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Comcast and Xfinity.com. Offering Xfinity TV, Internet, home phone, and home security services. Information on all that Xfinity has to offer in the Westfield area is available online at Xfinity.com. Underwriting for Community Radio is provided by the YMCA of Greater Westfield. Every day the YMCA strengthens the community through programs and services focused on youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility. For all the Y's many programs and services, visit us on the web at www.westfieldymca.org. The YMCA, 67 Court Street in downtown Westfield. We're more than a gym. We're a cause. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. Wednesday mornings start off right from 6 to 8 a.m. with Tina Gorman and Wake Up Wednesday. Community Radio 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University. This is 89.5 FM, WSKB, Westfield. And we're back. Good morning again, Westfield Tiger Talk Live, all things Westfield Technical Academy. Mr. Olari, before we get back to our guests, I see that you have the uh, the menus for Tiger's Pride in front of you for this week. Yes, I do, sir. So, uh, Would you what's, like another offer? I, 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 please, do lay it on me. Mr. Olari. Lay it well, on me. Well, listeners out there in Westfield and beyond. We are winding down the school year, we so are. if you haven't been to Tiger's Pride or you want to come back and just have a wonderful lunch on this beautiful day, uh, we are open today. Oh, and don't forget, we we do have al fresco dining. I enjoyed yes. that yesterday. Yes, you did. It was out beautiful there, outside. Courtesy of Westfield Bank. That's right. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. So, Our little seating area out there. We have the, uh, the vertical hanging gardens, too, which we can see from the windows here. Fresh basil on the table from our horticulture, hydroponics. Incredible integration. The list can go on and on. <laughs> anyways, and on, and on. Back to Quiet our show. Back to our, Get back to the menu, Rob. Back to our show. Okay, so for soups, we have Swiss chard bean and sausage soup, also offering a New England clam chowder. Um, we have some great salads, as always. We have a taco salad today. Chicken parm, always a favorite. Definitely our wheelhouse, Mr. O'Leary. Right, chicken parmesan. Um, we have some crab cakes, which I also love. Um, we have great sandwiches. We have a, a turkey, Rachel Panini, smoked turkey breast with Swiss, Swiss cheese, Thousand Island, and coleslaw in a pressed panini sandwich. Uh, we've got some BLT, turkey sandwiches, grilled cheese, corned beef, um, some great uh, half sandwich soup specials, and some beautiful desserts that I see putting out now. I see um, some carrot cake over there. I definitely see carrot cake. So that's, uh, that's what we got on the menu for today. And what happened? Oh, because I'm writing on it. And then tomorrow we have... No buffet. We, we're, our, our, our days were a little messed oh. up because we had, a, we had a, a brunch yesterday. That's correct. Recognition brunch yesterday for all of the uh, volunteers in public schools, the Westfield volunteers in public schools. So. And also the inside track on that is it's, the seniors will not be here, so the freshmen are flying solo on that's Friday. That's right. And doing a, doing a doing rock a star job, oh, yeah. though. So we are open tomorrow, pretty much the same menu. We are offering a um, bacon cheddar meatloaf and a grilled maple sage pork chop as the featured entrees tomorrow. So today or tomorrow, come on by. We're winding down. we only got a couple weeks left, and enjoy beautiful Tiger's I think next week is the kitchen sink buffet. That's right. That's it. That's it. (laughs) That's it. Everything everything must go. (laughs) And not to be missed. 
culinary extravaganza. That's right. And also, Mr. Langone, if you don't mind, just oh, please shout out please. to our, our men's baseball team that was on the Cape yesterday. That's right. And they were victorious um, for the vocational tournament. So they will be playing the winner of McCann. McCann Tech. And yep. whoever they're playing on Saturday. So they're still alive. I believe and they play at McCann. If they win. If they win. Correct. Um, and then girls softball will be in tournament play either Wednesday or Friday because Thursday is graduation. Right. So very, very proud of uh, the, the, the baseball and softball the, yeah. team. And just a shout out for our first car show. That That's right. It just happened last weekend. We Rescheduled us. from the weekend before due to weather. Yeah, it had a rain out. But um, they, they raised over $1,000 for the Westfield Tech Automotive. Pretty rock star on a long holiday weekend when folks aren't around. They did a really phenomenal job. Yeah, and this was for our motorsports. That's club. right. Which is a collaboration with our auto tech department, our collision auto collision tech, and, and manufacturing. manufacturing. So a couple of our young guns um, instructors are That's heading right. up that. So big shout out, to, uh, respectively, Mr. Alvin Brown. Mr. Dustin Rainey and Mr. Jamie Coggin from Manufacturing who keep and, that ball rolling. Yeah, and that's great too because a anyone in the school can participate. It doesn't they don't have, it doesn't have to be that's right. specific. So um, they got a they got a pretty big bunch of kids doing that motorsports. It's yeah, phenomenal. It's growing, 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 growing. So they raised some good money. So thank you to everyone that came out. And uh, I was out of town, but I saw some pics, and it looked like it was an awesome, awesome day. So. I know Mr. Coggins. I spoke with him this morning, and he plans on uh, you know this will be it's an annual be a regular event. event so, so we're we're looking forward to that. Just a couple couple great positive things, along with many others. But just wanted to mention that. All right. So back to our so back to our guests, Bob LePage. Thank you again for for joining us this morning. I know you've got a crazy schedule, so I appreciate you taking the time out. Um, so. Where were we? <laughs> kind of lost. Innovative path. Yeah, we were all we were we were, yeah, we're we were all over yeah. the place. So I can give you a couple of other. So we're moving forward with uh, our pathway programs. Um, since I know um, you've been very successful with skills capital grants, you know we are. We have been. Be looking forward to in the very near future. And um, gratefully, very yes, gratefully, very so very gratefully. Work, but um, as you know, the Commonwealth has invested almost now forty million into technology and equipment for vocational schools and community colleges. Um, all different types of programs, everything from your aviation program to the um, Hoyle Community MGM Culinary Center. Um, we're very hopeful that we'll have another announcement for our FY19 awards in the next few weeks, uh, mid-June, I'm hopeful. And then um, Governor Baker and the Skills Cabinet are working through the legislative process on uh, another $75 million capital um, request that's part of the economic development bill that will be another five years of funding that mm -hmm. program you know we really see that schools like um, the the two that are here today really have invested those dollars to increase opportunities for students and great teachers require great equipment great equipment to have great students prepared for industry so we're very excited um, to be able to, to to offer those opportunities for schools. Yeah, I mean, specifically here, our manufacturing and aviation, my first, the, the year that I arrived, actually, uh, that's where we met. Yeah. We met down in Boston. We were awarded a half a million dollars, which we split between manufacturing and aviation. Uh, could never have accomplished the completion of the renovations of the hangover at Barnes without the skills capital dollars. I mean, it's, it's, Troublesome, I don't know is the right word, but it's it always astounds me that people don't realize what a difficult situation individual schools or districts are with regard to um, capital to do improvements. You know, most people, I have family members who routinely say to me, you know, well, you know, you guys are, you're the largest part of your city budget, right? They, they're just throwing money at you. You can get whatever you want. That that isn't so. That isn't so. It's a, it's always a struggle to to find resources to squirrel away money here and there in your budget to save up for a rainy day to buy the things that people need. And it's all as a principal, it's always gut wrenching to have to tell somebody, I don't have the money. Right. Uh, particularly in this situation where you see how much they're doing 
with a lot of outdated stuff. Well, just computers, Joe. I that's mean, yeah. that's probably the worst. I mean, they're 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 built to die quickly. You know, they're built to to be obsolete in two years. And trying to keep up with the replacement of that is is mind numbing. And again, what, what and we, expensive. <laughs> what we need to remind the listeners, and we we try to do it all the time, is we we're producing tax makers. I That's mean, right. our, our goal is to feed the community so they can be gainfully employed. And, and gainfully start employed here. Contributing locally, correct. And contribute to the tax base. So, you know, we, we view this as a return on the investment. I've been and saying, it's hard to understand that. You know, you don't think of education like that, especially at the high school level, but... been saying it since I walked in the door. You've heard me say it a thousand times. We're a public utility, right? And this public utility is brought to the Westfield community by the Westfield community, and it's here to serve and support, sustain, and grow the Westfield, greater Westfield community. But in order to do that, we need to, we need to grow. So, you know, we're, we're grateful, of course, to the residents who make their contributions via their taxes every year, um, but it's also great to know that the Commonwealth recognizes our level of right. need and is making resources available and private to us. business. You private know, business that, and industry has been phenomenal contributes here. Contributes and, so. you know, every, everyone in between. So Yeah, and I, I think the important part about those investments is that, one, you know, I think it is a recognition that the only thing we know that's going to happen is change is happening in industry faster and faster, and so that we keeping to industry standards is essential because you want short time to full productivity. It's, you want a student to graduate and be able to go into a great employer right. in the region if it's in manufacturing or hospitality and know how to use that equipment effectively. So we recognize the fact that, you know, the pace of change is faster and faster and it's in all industries. You know, you can go into the new facility at Hoyo Community and see state of the art point of entry systems for culinary. People don't realize that the culinary and hospitality industry is increasingly complex, just as is manufacturing and information technology and healthcare. So helping you keep pace is really, again, an investment in our school that gets a return through our employers of being able to have the most um, productive employers in the United States among Massachusetts employers, highest productivity rates of their um, organizations, and it's because of the talent. You know, that is the Commonwealth's competitive advantage is talent. It's the quality right. of our educational right. systems. Mm -hmm. So strategic investments in skills capital were very um, hopeful that going through this legislative process that we'll be able to be partnering with our great supporters in the legislature to, to make those dollars available um, going forward. So that's something exciting that we hope to um, have clarity on by the end of the session, certainly by June or July, so that we can be able to give you multi years of where you're going to be able to make um, appeals for equipment. That's good That's because there, there, are, there are a couple yeah. of other areas that, uh, at least here at the academy, that are in I need a little, a little, a little capital TLC. Certainly. Um, but that kind of TLC that will bring the programs to the next level. Mm -hmm. And actually, one of them is the one that I sit in here. You know, our culinary department is is in pretty, pretty heavy need of a makeover relative to real state-of-the-art equipment, m much of which is going to be uh, available in, in places like MGM, right? We want to be able to give students the opportunity to train on the equipment right. that the employer, the largest employer, culinary employer in the region, arguably will be, you know, to make them ready. So, they're, you know, I have Eric and Chef Mooch telling me all the time, I can need this kind of oven and this. And I've never heard of these right. things. Right. And they'll say to me, we haven't either. It's brand new. Yeah. You know, yeah, they, these things are. Like you had mentioned, everything's more efficient. You could cook a pizza in eight minutes now. And, I mean, that's all efficiency, efficiency, and right. turnover. Even just a little side note, I was in Rhode Island this weekend, and we were at a very, very busy restaurant shout out to Matunic Oyster Bar <laughs> they grow their own oysters incredible if you're ever down there but it was very busy and, and I was with my grandson who's 10 he gets a little feisty and my mom and my wife but we were getting ready to pay and I was looking for the swipe card that a lot of the chains have on the table where now you don't even need your server right yeah. you put your card you get your check 
You run it, you put the tip in, you print your copy, and you're gone. Do it all there. Well, the reason they do it is because they can work more efficiency rather than stopping taking an order, coming over. And, you know, those pennies adds up, an extra drink over Well, you here. know that you were in the business. You know how, how challenging uh, the overhead in the restaurant business mm -hmm. is for sure. So, it, yeah, it, it, hits, it hits every Everything. industry it, it's some, some way or another. So what else is what else is happening at the state level that we hope to? Yeah, I think the the other, in, you know, in addition to the high quality career pathways, you know, the um, for next year we've been talking about. It, I think we mentioned it last time is we really are working. Um, this year we did a lot of outreach around apprentice strategies, mm -hmm. and I know that you guys already are in that dialogue um, here locally. But we really believe. Actually, we had uh, Mary Cooney and Selena Pendex here. They were here a w week or yeah, two they ago. So they were out. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, at specifically talking about apprenticeships with MGM. So we're we're glad that that momentum is continuing. Yeah. So we're, you know that's an area where we really feel that we have opportunities here in the Commonwealth to leverage our vocational programs to make more seamless opportunities into apprentice to also partner with our community colleges for related instruction as mm -hmm. somebody moves up that apprentice ladder, particularly in things like culinary and non-traditional trades. You know, the trades have done a phenomenal job for decades tens of decades mm -hmm. you know they they have a system that works but that is only covering a small percentage of right. the workforce so that's something we really have on our radar screen we've had tremendous support from industry educators workforce boards um, a lot of people that you you know from around here people like Dave Cruz who have really been giving us a lot of solid advice and counsel and looking forward to next year starting to deploy that as a more systematic strategy to support apprentice. Um, certainly at the national level, there is a lot of dialogue and we're hopeful that when some federal funds become available, we'll be positioned to be competitive in being able to bring those funds to schools like this to who want to build those kind of apprentice programs. So that's a, you know, a, another jumping off point for next year where we've been doing the planning starting to look at how we align the systems and then how do we support those like your organization who are already putting their foot forward and saying we want to do this to be able to develop some models that others right. can replicate. All right, Pete, it's, Pete's telling me it's time. We're going to take another break and we'll be back with uh, Assistant State Secretary of Education, Bob Page. Stay tuned. Yeah. 
Support for Community Radio on WSKB is provided by Betts Plumbing and Heating Supply Company, an independent, family-owned wholesaler serving Westfield for over 50 years, specializing in plumbing, heating, and industrial piping supplies. On the web at BettsPlumbing.com or at 14 Coleman Avenue in Westfield. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Barnes & Noble College Bookstore in the Ely Campus Center, offering Westfield State t-shirts, sweatshirts, and gift merchandise, all of your academic needs, and offering textbook materials in new, used, ebook, and rental formats. Available at the bookstore on campus or online at westfieldstate.bncollege.com. Underwriting for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Westfield serving the youth of the Whip City and surrounding communities since 1969. For more information on the Great Futures Club for ages 3 to 5, happening weekdays, and the Club Teen Center for ages 11 and older, weekdays from 6.30 till 8 p.m., go online at bcgwestfield.org or visit the club at 28 West Silver Street. The Boys and Girls Club of Greater Westfield. Great futures start here. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. Wednesday mornings start off right from 6 to 8 a.m. with Tina Gorman and Wake Up Wednesday. Community Radio 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is 89.5 FM WSKB. Westfield. And we're back. And we're back. And we're back. Right I didn't miss my cue this right time. Right on cue. <laughs> bad, Joe, you know, timing not, time timing is not my <laughs> long suit, but I get I get where I'm going eventually. <laughs> yes, you, you Mr. Olari. I have a question for Mr. Bob. Plus. Sure. You know, oftentimes when we work in our little silos and, you know, sometimes we're like, we need to do this, we need to do that, but how do we do it? It's, you know, it's, we're here and we look at this thing globally. Has there been any discussion at the state level about addressing um, lowering the age for students to be employed. Oh, so I knew, I knew you were gonna. I so knew this it. is what we're running into. We have a lot of qualified seniors that have met the shop competencies under Chapter seventy four, and they're seventeen years old. Now we do have the state exemption because they've been trained. However, but <laughs> if we're dealing with corporations either you know large massachusetts corporations or or you know home depot if you will uh, a hospital we just ran into it with a bank and i know there's different government regulations and yeah. finance too um we're we're kind of it's you know you talk about having some foresight and kind of getting ahead of the curve this is something that is kind of pigeonholed in our kids because they're ready to rock and roll. And they've got some phenomenal skills. Great skills. That these employers need. 
Has that ever been discussed? Yeah, the listeners couldn't see me stand to, to, to dodge <laughs> that question. Yeah. Well, I'm not dodging that question. I no, guess I, I, I... Yeah, so, yes, that's very much on the radar screen. It has emerged very significantly in the last six to nine months as a couple of dialogue points, in particular as we've been working on developing new pathways that have some work-based experience requirements, um, not as maybe as aggressive as your co-op program, but some hour of work-based learning. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, um, 100 hours over the um, senior year or junior senior year kind of strategy and innovation pathways. So we have been investigating models of how are some of the more innovative states, particularly those that are part of the New Skills for Youth um, consortium of the 10 states that have gotten these high quality career pathway grants. Um, and I think it's a challenge as far as finding two mechanisms. What are the regulatory issues that you've mentioned? People can get waivers. Some people are very hesitant to work with waivers, even though they're legal. They just have a, a right. corporate policy. Right. Um, two, there is a hiring challenge particularly for small employers who look at co-op students and or internship students, and they're concerned about the liability issues. So they say, yeah, your students are tremendously skilled. We'd really like to have them, but my insurance may be at risk, or I'm not sure I really have proper mentoring because I know how important mentoring of those students is when they get in the workplace. So there are some states who are doing some innovative things. I really have enjoyed spending some time with uh, colleagues down in Rhode Island in particular in the last month. They have put together a kind of an innovative system to create a state clearinghouse that allows a centralized state-backed, um, essentially employer <coughs> association to be the, the designated hirer for those as opposed to all the individual companies, okay. which reduces the elements of waivers, because if you're part of that state program, you automatically are waived. Right. Then you're covered through that program from the insurance standpoint by the state, not on the, on the employer. So you're essentially a hosted by that employer, right. but employed by this <coughs> quasi-government agency. So that becomes a huge incentive, doesn't it? Huge incentive. Yeah. So we, we <clears> are <throat> looking at models. That is an area that we know we need some deeper conversations. Yeah. Schools yeah. have it figured out in different ways, but again, I don't think we have, from a systems perspective, really addressed it. And then those students who, um, you know, this time of year, I think I... It's not unusual for me to see a superintendent and I ask how they're they're doing and they say, oh, my right hand hurts from signing so many waivers <laughs> for, for students. Yeah. So it becomes kind of this administrative situation where they're running to superintendents to sign off on work permits and then the work permit paper gets lost and all those elements. So right, right. it's on our radar. And well, that's we know, good. We know we need a system and, yeah. it, and it has to be locally driven. But if there's a uh, opportunity for us to support the system strategy that's what we're after sure that's good news um it is good news because it's you know it's a real challenge we for us. We, we bump we, into it on a weekly basis it just happened two days ago that's right yep and we have many really well-intentioned employers of who course would like to assist mm -hmm. but then they come up with their own internal constraints and that's what we have to um, figure out some systems there are a couple other states kentucky um, and some dialogues with them and Louisiana who are starting similar models. We anticipate this challenge of the work elements and the employment elements are going to be escalated as we talk about apprentice strategies because, as you know, to be in the registered apprentice, you have mm -hmm. to be employed. Right. Right. So th that's also driving this dialogue. Um, but it's a, yeah. an opportunity for improvement that right. uh, is on my radar screen with no immediate solution, but at least but trying, that's, to, trying to figure something no, the out. The, the fact that the conversation is happening, I is think, good. is very encouraging. You know, and to take that to one deeper level, and again, we, we get caught up here over our lunches. We get very passionate. But, you know, we're also talking about some of my colleagues and I, you know, we talk about what we think the future of education is going to be. And as these stretch courses come to light and innovation pathways and, and articulation agreements and all these opportunities, I feel that you're going to have a very high achieving student really at 16 or 17 hitting the pinnacle of their high school 
career. I mean, they, they may be done. I mean, I have a senior that's got, I don't know, almost 30 credits already. So I just think as we look into the future, and maybe we're five or 10 years out, you're going to have 16 or 17 year olds ready to rock and roll. So I, I think. Well, we have, we have a system and a model that's based on right. a bygone comes, era. Right. And change comes slowly. But, that's right. But the, the reality is we can't do it the way we did it 30 years ago because the world isn't the same and the kids aren't the same. Most importantly, the kids aren't the same. Mm -hmm. So if we're, doing, if, we're, if we're handling business today the same way that we did 30 years ago, we're, lo we're sunk. We're sunk. Hey, we, we talk we, about our school day. All of the time. <laughs> I mean, it hasn't changed the, the minute. The school day, the school yeah. year. Yeah. Exactly. So, so good to hear. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, I mean, I think all these areas, you know, what it really takes is us supporting you, but it takes leading schools and leading districts like you who want to make that change. You know, we are in, in the academic world. Um, I like to say I'm in the workforce world <laughs> as much as the academic world, but we are slow to change. We, we are very traditional oriented, but I do think, you know, we have a more complex world, but we are allocating about the same amount of time for learning as we sure. did, you know, a hundred years ago. Right. Yeah. And the complexity of the jobs continues to escalate. So if we really want to be serving our students well, then we have to be able to be innovative at the district level in our academic planning, in our career services, in our uh, partnering with our post-secondary institutions. Um, it does take a commitment, and you know I thank you and your your districts in particular for being a leader in the state on that kind of thinking because it is those districts that will set the course for others. Um, they look at what you're doing, and they look at what some of your leading peers are doing, and then they say, because their parents say, to them, well, why don't my kids have that opportunity? Or industry says to them, you know, they're doing great things over in Westfield. Why are we not? I got, I'll give you an example. I got a call. You might know him. I didn't know him well. A guy, a um, gentleman named um, Buck Upson. Oh, God, I know so Buck. Buck my, my days in Springfield. Yeah, I, I got a call from Buck Upson, who's from this region, ran a company out in, I think, Westfield or West Springfield. West, he was in manufacturing, manufacturing. yeah. Yeah, he said, I'm in the he was on. He was one of the founding members of the Putnam Technical Fund when we were getting ready Absolutely. to move into the new building. Yep, big supporter, big fan of Dave Cruz, and then called me living I'm retired in the Cape and he said now I just have a question how come we could do it out there but we can't do it down here Bob <laughs> can you explain how come we can't I said it's not a question of whether you can do it it's whether we can support you to get there and whether you have the will to do right. it right you know we we fortunate we have <clears throat> and and I say this humbly being from western mass but we have always had great collaborations between our community colleges, our um, workforce development boards, our career centers, and our high schools. And unfortunately, not all parts of the Commonwealth right. are as strong in that. And I think that's in particular what it's going to take to to change education is it's not going to be one solely. It has to be. A, it has to be. It has, it has to, to be a, be a collaboration, right. And, and that's what really makes you know, your organization and others in this region particularly successful. It's that industry um, and workforce and education, multi-level partnerships. Pete, are you giving me the signal that it's, that, that our time at all? Oh, yes, we see that our, our superintendent is looming in the wings. Uh, so we want to thank you, Bob, for being with us. Hopefully, uh, if your schedule allows, we can get you back in the fall to kind of update us on What's going on? I think regular it's updates always, are awesome, yeah, not yeah. just for us, but for the community. I want, you know, m many people just don't realize what's going on or don't realize to the extent that the, the things are happening uh, with regard to the initiatives you're describing. So it would be great to get you back if we could. Absolutely. And just wanted to congratulate. I understand you'll have a 130 some odd seniors to congratulate That's right. them and their parents because it does take a a family plus your instructors for great work. It does. Those graduates. Yeah, we will. We were looking forward to that. And speaking of that, next week, uh, because of graduation and M and MCAS, we will not be doing a live broadcast. So we'll look forward to being back with you the following Thursday. We have two more broadcasts uh, to get us through the end of the year, and then we'll break for summer. So can't believe we're already here. Uh, please stay tuned for the superintendent spotlight. Your time to wrap with Chris and Zap. Have a great weekend. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Bay State Dental. Comprehensive dentistry at 14 convenient locations in Springfield, 
Chicopee, Longmeadow, West Springfield, Belchertown, East Longmeadow, Ludlow, Northampton, Greenfield, and Wilbraham, as well as 29 Broad Street in Westfield. Bay State Dental makes it a priority to help you achieve and maintain the healthy smile you deserve. On the web at baystatedental.com. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. Wednesday mornings start off right from 6 to 8 a.m. with Tina Gorman and Wake Up Wednesday. Community Radio, 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is 89.5 FM WSKB Westfield.
Tiger's Pride, which is our temporary home until the studio is open. I don't know if you've been in there, Mr. Rogers, but there is sheetrock. On the Actually, now. last Thursday um, after the show, uh, my co-host, Mrs. Darji, uh, I, and I went in and took a quick tour. And, um, you know, Brian says it's coming. I mean, it looked great. It's coming yeah, a long you way. You can start to see where ready, things are going to be. It's ready for paint. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, it really like, is. This is really happening. I don't know if you like, noticed, but I put a little prop out there, an old an old camera that was donated by uh, my old public access. Oh, really? Well, I'm going to go check it out so right after a, the show. There's, yeah. this is, there's props over there now. But this is great. Like, this is really happening. This is going to be our new home and m more importantly than that it's going to be an opportunity for some of our kids to dive into the world of tv and radio right pete correct and some adults and some yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just to say. It's gonna be, absolutely it's going to be my new home too i, I right. want i want to have a uh, uh, carpentry build me a nice uh table that i can roll around and put in for the for the radio shows and i have uh, six microphones and, and new oh, scissor stands perfect. and stuff built for that so perfect all right, awesome. so it is 66 degrees here in Westfield, and uh, we're going to be 77 today. Yep. Uh, and then it looks like uh, rain Friday, rain Saturday, and Sunday. It actually looks a little bit better than it once did, but right. it's going to be in the 80s Things the next are looking good for the brew fest on Saturday. They are. So yes. 70% chance of rain. Yeah, but it's during the, I look between 12, and, between 12 and 5, it looks like it's going to dry out. So. Okay, good. But, but come, it's, for, come for some nice 30. What matters right now is that it's. You know, not sunny a cloud there, in the sky yes, and yes. sunny. I see yes. it over there. The streak, the streak returns. It's speaking a of day. speaking of streaks, um, this is now number one for you for and you I. and I to be actually <laughs> right. on the show. <laughs> right, because yeah. <laughs> right, it's been what we keep going on and off. For yeah, you've had like one here, one there. One of you has been busy, that type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Right. it's been a busy spring. It really it has. has. I mean, I mean, we 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 do it. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, we have been spending. Uh, a lot of our time prepping for, planning, and right. getting, you know, everything ready for our big transition. In fact, we have another meeting after this afternoon on transition right, 11 and 11:30. Yeah. So, we're almost there. We are, and so there'll be obviously our, our we're going from seven to six elementary schools. They're now going to be K to four instead of K to five, and then our five six school has already been named. So it's Westfield Intermediate yes. School, and then Westfield Middle School will be uh, grade the seven, seven eight and eight. So then. It's done. It's just about done. A lot of people moving around this summer. There are. Um, and we've even hired a mover. So we're, we, we're, have. We're, we have. We have. So I, I believe. I remember the movers when, when they moved out of Juniper Park. Yeah. Same people. Oh, they, they, did a, they did a great job. Yeah. That's why we, you know, when when someone does something well, yeah, uh, right. do that. Hey, listen, speaking of Saturday, though, and I just wanted to do this before we get to our guests, but Dave Dion, who's a horticulture here uh, at instructor um, at Westfield Tech, will be teaching a free workshop on composting at Grandmother's Garden this Saturday at 11 o'clock. So uh, Mr. Dion will use a small compost pile in a bin that was built by our students uh, to talk about how to make compost, how to maintain the pile, different types of bins to use, and the benefits of using compost. Um, it's actually geared toward backyard gardeners of all levels so if yeah. you're a beginner intermediate uh, come on over to grandmother's garden at 11 o'clock Saturday uh, if you're interested in building a home composting system the workshop will take about 45 minutes and it's going to be held rain or shine uh, they'll go into the gazebo or the shed if it rains so that's an exciting event and I love when our schools give back to the community at no cost that's absolutely a great thing. I might absolutely. be buying a plant off the table later on there's sweet basil out I see that um, oh, <laughs> I see that. I was here yesterday and I was smelling it. Yeah. All right. So, Mr. Rogers, and, uh, again, nice to have us uh, back together. Who do we have for our guest today? Well, our guest today, Zap, is uh, Mr. Brian King. Brian is the director of CLASP, which, Pete, for our listeners, is Connected Learning in After School and Summer Partnership. Thank you. And it's part of the REB, yeah. which is the Regional <laughs> Employment <laughs> Board of Hamden County. Yeah. All right. So, Brian, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And, and, and one of the reasons that we wanted Brian on the show um, is to let our listeners know, again, a lot of the, a lot of the things that we do in Westfield schools... Um, and when we've talked about this before with our with our WeTube or Westfield to Education Business Alliance, a lot of times we do things behind the scenes that that nobody knows about, and the community partnerships that we have, and the outreach programs that we have. And I, I think Brian, it's been what three or four years now. I I think that that sounds right. Right. Four years. Four years that Westfield Schools has been um, collaborating with CLASP. And I, I like to call it the CLASP. I That's just right. think it sounds better. But um, it does. It does. Um, like and the Clash. Or, or it like Clash. Cooler. Yeah. Definitely right. Definitely cooler. But, um, you know, we, we, we do a lot of work um, with the Connected Learning and After School Summer Partnership because, as some folks may know, we have two. 
um, massive summer programs um, for our kids uh, that are funded through Title I and Title III. Um, uh, our summer adventure for our elementary school students and our outdoor adventure for our, our middle school students that we run through um, throughout the month of July and into August. And those programs really don't happen um, without the partnership with, uh, with Brian and his team. Um, we can talk a little bit today about what those entail, but, but we also run a, uh, a program during the year for grade seven and eight students, uh, our middle school students, that we run right here at Westfield Technical Academy, again, in partnership with CLASP, and that's our middle school STEM program, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics, and that's an after-school program. I think I was here as principal when we started that. A that's absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, and... You know, the CLASP does a lot of a, a great work with us, not only in helping getting those programs off the ground and providing opportunities for our kids, but we also have a, a real, a real um, laser-like focus on, on what we call positive youth development, and, and we are also looking at workforce development. Right. So there's a lot that goes yeah. into what, what these programs entail. So, Brian, why don't you just give us a quick overview of what, of what you do and what CLASP is, um, and then we can kind of talk a little bit about, about the work that we do together in Westfield Public Schools. Sure. Well, CLASP, as you've said, is the Connected Learning and After School and Summer Partnership, um, which was renamed. It used to be called the Hasbro Summer Learning Initiative. It started uh, probably around 2006, and it was a leader in the state around, uh, it's, uh, it's called an intermediary organization that really worked with community-based organizations and schools to improve the quality of out-of-school time and summer programming. And with the assumption is that in order for our kids to have better outcomes, we really needed to align what was happening in school and out of school. Absolutely. So for, um, for I took over as the director in 2012 and been working really hard to really get additional resources and connecting the research to practice to out-of-school time. Um, so really focusing on engaging kids in their own learning, you know, having a, a sort of the free play of learning. We use STEM, uh, science, technology, engineering, and math, is really the hook to get kids excited. Absolutely. About sure is. And then from there, we can also embed different types of other learning goals, such as literacy for the summer, and um, also, as you were talking about, social, emotional, or positive youth development. Um, so we work hard throughout the entire year to work with community-based organizations um, to get curriculum into their hands, to train them, train them on these different pieces. A big focus of the initiative for a long time has really been in the summer. Yes. Because that's been a historical, historic time where kids don't have activities to do and learning languishes and they're what's called summer slide. Yeah. You, you guys, summer regression. Do you believe yeah. in that? Is that something that happens here where kids leave in the uh, spring and well, come back in the fall somewhere? Yeah, in, in, and not to spend a ton of time on that, but it... it, it it does happen when our sure. students are in school 10 months a year, 180 days. They get two months know, off. And then they get basically, some, sometimes we have like 11 weeks. Yeah. That's almost three months. Right, you know, yeah. when, you do the, when you do the math in terms of, of weeks. And, and um, you know, sometimes we see that as a principal, as when I was at the elementary level especially, I saw that where I could look at kids reading data at the end of the year and be like, wow, we've got this many students on benchmark. And then we retest them in the fall and quite a few of them slid back natural and logical we yep. caught them up and we got them we moved them ahead right but that does that does happen so that's a big part of our work we so working with organizations schools like yourselves we um create curriculum that the nature curriculum that really embeds a lot of opportunities for students to engage in what i call uh, experiential literacy yes literacy in authentic ways they're not just sitting down and doing literacy work but really they're exploring the world and as a result they're engaging in books and looking things up and asking their own questions and answering them so a lot of that. Um, so we do that through the summer. So we create the curriculum, we do the trainings. We also spend a lot of our time and effort on measuring outcomes. Um, right. So we focus our outcomes on um, literacy for kids during the summer. We focus on social emotional outcomes. And um, we also focus on really on measuring program quality. And, and to piggyback on that, um, our programs are our summer adventure again for grades, uh, rising grades K through yep. six, and outdoor adventure for rising seven and eight. Brian, folks don't know, w w um, not only are our kids, you know, getting uh, project based learning and hands on, and there's this incredible nature curriculum that we use from CLASP yep. that our teachers are trained in and that and it's really it's awesome it's like a summer camp experience it is that's right it, it truly is but like you said 
there's a there's a there is a learning component there is a literacy component in fact the first week of the program historically folks from your organization come in working with our folks and we give students a pretest on dibbles yeah in absolutely fact, last year's data was off the chart yeah and i mean that's really exciting so two things working with westfield as a public school system has been really exciting because you guys have been so innovative around this and the teachers get excited about it and they just love implementing this program they love the opportunity to have an alternative way of doing their own teaching. During the summer, they don't have to make sure they're hitting all of these standards. They're really letting the kids lead the learning. Right. And as a result, they, they get the opportunities to practice their teaching practice that really makes them feel ready to go, you know, come fall. Um, so it's really been a great opportunity. The, um, what did you say, Chris? You were talking about the... Uh, the measurements of the dibbles. Yeah, oh, we, the we use the outcomes. outcomes you know, right, we've right. got the maze assessment. We've right. got dibbles. We've got we've got a couple of different literacy pieces to look right. at. And and again, one of the goals of the program, like you said, Brian, is to, you know, stave off that's right um, summer regression for the students that go um, to the program that are recommended through their home schools. Right. And again, it's a Title One program, so that we are taking in students that have an academic need into our program. And so I got to ask a question because sure. you're throwing out titles. Yes. yes. <laughs> and and I'm and Pete's probably like Title One, three, Raising over. Yeah. <laughs> Not to mention so, dibbles and dazes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I got I got to ask you just as um, right. So what, what is, is Title All One? Yeah, what is okay. Title Three. What is what's right. dibbles? Okay. Kibbles. Okay. I mean, yes. what do we got? All these. All right. Now I here. broke the rules. Yeah, you, you right. did. I, you I went way off the reservation. You here. really. So, you got right. all educational right. on everybody. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but but, but again, in all fairness, it's not like you know it, we've been here every week. Most well, I know what you're people, talking about. <laughs> most people only know what Title Nine means. Right. Well, and even then. And even then. And even then. Yeah. Just to keep you know keep it simple because something even though I'm the quote unquote Title One director. I keep it simple for myself, you know, and that is Westfield Public Schools based upon, or any public school system, based upon the percentage of economically disadvantaged students we have in the district. And we're about 30-something percent, yeah, 30s. Yeah, thir mid-30s mid -30s, right 30s, now, yeah. although it is trending downward. Um, we, are, we are granted um, funds from the federal government um, called Title I. Okay, and we get X amount of dollars um, into the city, into the system that we use um, for programs, for interventions. Um, schools are schools um, based upon their percentage of economically disadvantaged students are awarded um, particular amount of that of that pool. All right, as well as there's some. Um, salaries that are paid through that. We have interventionists at every school that we fund through Title I to provide literacy and math support for students that need it. But to make a very long story short, these programs that we're able to run through the summer, we would not be able to run them without, without Title, Title, Title I funding. Right. funding. And there's a lot of interventions we wouldn't be able oh, to do. There's a right. lot right. we wouldn't also, be able to do without Title I. But also what you guys do, which is um, in, unique, is that you also combine it with your Title III, which you have a large yes. population. All right, of you brought it up. What's Title, Title III? III? <laughs> that's, a, that's an exciting group. Here. Right, so our, we have a language, uh, for our, our language learners, those whose, whose first language isn't English, we, what, we, what this program has done is we've been able to grow it, specifically over the last several years where not only do we have a, quote, you know, your quote unquote Title I student, your student, student that needs some academic support, we have second language learners in the program. And over the last two years, we've expanded and we have um, some of our, our sub-separate special education programs are now involved too. Our essential life skills students as well as our development or learning profile DLP students are also in, in place. So we've, we've really become a massively inclusive program for our summer work. And it's been, it's been a great place to innovate. And that, that's something yes. that we promote too for a school system to have the out of school time a place where you can start to try things out, right. figure out practices Absolutely. where you're not and it, bound by and it. And it, ta it, it rolls right into what we want in our district with inclusive practice and um, you know personalized learning. Hey, we're it's, starting to make sense. Is that what you're trying we're, to say? Yeah. We are. We're, we're, yes. oh. and, you know, yes. and this has sort of been my How's dream. that? That's because <laughs> I've been working in school improvement for a very long time, and taking on this job has been exciting, especially with Westfield, because it's really proof that you can do some school improvement from the outside, from the outside. in, right. rather right. than, you know, and it's really been a great demonstration of that. But the only point I wanted to make before you got into all the acronyms and the title <laughs> you know, was that, you know, for a long time, our goal has been for summer just to stem, as you said, to stem summer learning loss. So, so we would see, like, if the kids didn't regress, it, right. was, positive. it, was, positive. it was positive. But now we have the data to show that we can really make learning gains. In right. fact, last summer, the amount of growth our kids made in five weeks at, some, at the Summer Adventure Program, yep. we 
we were like we don't, staggered. We, we were, were like, wow, we, that we are doesn't, staggered, and we that don't happen. and we don't actually don't understand why we're getting such gains. So well, uh, I'll take why. it. I know why. I know why. I know why. Oh, good, good. It's I can year round school, but what you need is you need is two to three week breaks, and and that enough for the kids to get away, but enough where they don't regress. Ten eleven weeks is too much. They've been talking. They've been talking about that for years, having a year round school where it's instead of having that one week break, it's a two to three week break. Well, going to weed my garden. Yeah, but I also want to. I also want to. Truly, though, I also want to, um, you know, shout out the summer staff that we oh, have. Yeah. We have a incredibly strong teaching faculty that works with our students which throughout is, the summer. Which is key. Which and is we're gonna hit, We're going to go to a yes. break. But before we go to break, Pete, uh, I just want to mention to folks, we are in Tiger's Pride Restaurant, and they're actually open today. So if you're looking for something for lunch, they'll be open from 1045 to 1215. The soups are Swiss chard, bean, and sausage soup, uh, or New England clam chowder. And they have salads. They have a garden salad. They have a taco salad, which I is know, pretty nice. That, yeah. yeah. Uh, the entrees today are, are uh, chicken parm and crab cakes. And their sandwich special is a turkey Rachel panini and of course they always have grilled uh and cold sandwiches tomorrow is not a buffet pete they're having entrees again so they'll you have know the why same tomorrow style. Why? Because it's the first freshman solo service. Right, so that's you don't want to put a, you don't want to throw a buffet at the freshman all no. by themselves. No, and the first freshman uh, service then their their entrees tomorrow are bacon cheddar meatloaf. Yes, I know I'm coming over. And grilled <laughs> maple sage pork chop. So, uh, <laughs> folks, stop on down. You get a great deal, a lot of food, um, and uh, again, you can enter through the uh, gymnasium entrance on Smith Avenue. Uh, it is 9:24. You're listening to Superintendent Spotlight. We'll be back after the break. Writing for WSKB's community radio programming is brought to you in part by CrossFit Swarm, offering CrossFit, Bex Body Express boot camp style classes, as well as Swarm Fit Cardio Fitness classes, incorporating fitness moves and choreographed to fun, upbeat music. CrossFit Swarm's coaches provide the most current, highest quality training, nutrition, and fitness programs. On the web at CrossFitSwarm.com or at 4 Coleman Avenue in Westfield. Underwriting for Community Radio on WSKB is brought to you in part by Rockies. Over 30 convenient locations throughout Massachusetts, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Connecticut, and Florida. One of the nation's largest ace dealers. Expertise and great product selection in paint, hardware, lawn and garden. That's Rockies, rock solid service since 1926. On the web at rockies.com for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Westfield, serving the youth of the Whip City and surrounding communities since 1969. For more information on the Great Futures Club for ages 3 to 5, happening weekdays, and the Club Teen Center for ages 11 and older, weekdays from 6.30 till 8 p.m., go online at bcgwestfield.org or visit the club at 28 West Silver Street. The Boys and Girls Club of Greater Westfield. Great Futures start here. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is 89.5 FM, WSKB, Westfield.
And you're listening to Superintendent Spotlight. We're in the background right now. You have music from As Schools Match Wits, where I used to coach, and I always say that every time. But we're very excited because two weeks ago at the quarterfinals, Westfield High School beat Suffield High School, and Suffield High School was very heavily favored, Absolutely. by the way. And we didn't just beat them. What does 310 to 85 sound like to you, uh, Mr. Rogers? Not a very competitive contest. Not at all. So That's called the drubbing. Yes, it yes. is. That's the drubbing. So tune in to WGBY Channel 57 this Saturday, June 2nd at 7 o'clock. Westfield High School will take on Northampton High School. In the uh, schools match which semifinals, the winning team will make it to the championship match to go after the coveted Colomore Cup and go Bombers. There we go. <laughs> go Westfield High. Absolutely. Indeed. Indeed. Congratulations, kids. You're doing a phenomenal job. They're representing Westfield well. They really are. They really are. And, and um, you know, like we were saying before we uh, took the first break, speaking of representing Westfield well, you know, the, 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 the teachers of the um, the CLASP summer programs, the Title I, Title III programs that we have, they are such an extremely dedicated group of people, um, very veteran staff for the most part, veterans of the program. We do have some newbies every year like, like, like any other program does, but um, the ownership that they take with the kids in the summer, like last year when we opened up with our staff meeting, um, and we've got that's the summer staff meeting coming up on June 6th, uh, or June 13th, rather. Um, when, when we had that staff meeting last year, I challenged them, all of them, to say, look, summer regression is, sure, we don't want the kids to regress, but I challenged all of them and said, we want growth. And we got growth. I mean, just, um, w we were thrilled. But we, we can get back to, to summer a little bit later on as well. But um, one of the programs that we do working with you, Brian, through, through the school year, um, we really have a, a laser focus on middle school students. So students that are, um, you know, in grades seven and eight, right. trying to get um, an appreciation or a love or a connection to um, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, because that, that is the need, that is the, uh, a big area out there in industry. Um, you know, math is so important, science is so important, technology is king, right? And the engineering field, I believe, over the years is seeing a dwindling number of people going into the field, right, Pete? Yeah, absolutely. It, it's tougher to find people who are trained engineers or people who can think critically. Right. You know, it, it's it's just a tough field to be in right now. Well, it's it tough is. Field. I mean, look at look at the machi in the machining. Just in the machining, you need to be an engineer and a machinist to Correct. get that kind of a job. And you can't turn them out of this school fast enough. That's right. And you got to keep up with the technology. Be ready to learn a lot as you enter the... Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Well, no doubt. And it changes, okay. yeah. Just like computers, the technology, every three to five years, it completely turns over. Yeah. Absolutely. You, you, need to, you need to know how to learn to learn. Exactly. Is that right? Yeah, and, and one of the... One of the pieces that we were looking at in our district working with with uh, with clasp was how do we engage middle school students how do we how do we kind of set a fire underneath them into this field you know to yep. and with our middle school we it's it's we're not very creative but we call it our middle school stem program <laughs> at westfield technical academy which i which i kind of like is that what you call it yeah we do yeah I we do it was this Wait, wait, West, it's, is that what it is? I thought it had a better name than that. No, it's, uh, sorry, it was uninventive. No, but, um, Chris it, came up with yeah, the name. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> but no, it's, um, it's been a, that's been a rousing success too. And every, you know, for the past couple of years, um, we've had, um, multiple sessions, a, sp a fall session and a spring session, each with about 30 to 35 students enrolled from both North and South Middle. I was going to say, Brian, enrollment for this is going to be a little easier next year because they're all going to be and at Westfield that's Middle. Right, that's cool. that's going to make a big difference. It may, and we may get more students involved that way, sure, too. But yeah. um, really has uh, been very successful. Um, in fact, um, and I won't let the cat out of the bag too early, but when um, Brian's come in um, to do some program evaluations on that that, and as well, but we'll talk about that a little bit later, but the bottom line is we're getting our kids into this building, into Westfield Technical Academy early to see if this is uh, an avenue they want to go down. Right. We're getting them into some of our, our shops. We're, 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 we're pr presenting a lot of project-based activities yep. to them, a lot of engineering concepts. Pete was talking about critical thinking. We're getting them working in small groups, um, and we're challenging them to think for themselves, to ask questions, to, 
And there's also a social emotional component right. of it That's as right. well. So it's, it's a very robust program that runs a couple of days a week. Um, you know, we, we transport our students from the middle schools to tech and back to, and back home. And um, it, it's been it's been a fantastic run. Yeah. Well, I think that, you know, going back to the to the summer and building up to that is that, you know, what's been fun about working with Westfield is that we've really seen a scope and a sequence to the whole STEM education process. Right. So the summer program, we, we engage the kids in just nature exploration, right? They're just exploring their world, asking questions, answering those questions. Yes. When they get into the, the fourth and fifth grades, or fifth and sixth, is it in the... The, the STEM... It will the, be. The, the, right. It will be, right. But STEM for, is seven and eight. Right. So it's yeah. fifth and yeah. sixth. They do a... Right now, they're doing a service learning, but sort of a citizen, citizen science. Citizen science. Which is the goal where they're collecting data for a real purpose, understanding how data works. And then when we get them into middle school, um, then we're excited to get them more on their own pathway of service learning, but their own inquiry. So it's been a nice buildup. The, the model here is really great, and I think a model for other, uh, other districts. So that's been great. And the STEM Academy itself has been fun. So just to mention that one of the roles that CLASP, the Connected Learning and After School and Summer Partnership does, <laughs> is um, we also leverage funding to support quality programming. So through both a grant from the Department of Education and Secondary Education, yeah. as well as a grant from the Pioneer Valley, um, oh, sorry about this, the United Way of Pioneer United Valley. United Way yeah, of Pioneer go. Valley. Yeah. Um, we've been able to fund these programs, but in the, in the middle school programs. Yes. So we got a grant to create curriculum yes. for the summer where they, the last year, what did the kids do? They, they studied, uh, outdoor, uh, what was it, outdoor deficit, or the w water as a, and they, they come up with their own topics. They come up with their own theme, right. But they studied, uh, they see the, they're studying the watershed, and yes. uh, dealing with issues of limited water resources um, in the summer program. But the STEM Academy has been a real opportunity for them to connect with vocational school yes. staff and also with their um, own middle school staff to connect, to create these project-based learning environment where they're doing STEM projects, right? Well, and you, 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 you said a mouthful there, but yeah. you're right on because what's nice about the STEM Academy is the teachers of the STEM Academy are, are Westfield Technical Academy teachers. Right. Right. So it's a nice... Um, it, it, it gives the kids a good, op you know, hey, if, if you're going to come here, these right. are some of the staff you might be working with, number one. But these are our experts, you know, yep. in, our, in some of our shops. You know, these are our, you know, some of our finer um, science teachers, you know, yep. that we have. And they're challenging, they're challenging the kids to, um, and i got to be honest, they've got some pretty high expectations of the, of kids. the kids, too. They do. Yeah. Well, it's been also it's been exciting about this. Is so this, we have the STEM, and the kids sign up because they're excited about STEM. Right. But then through that, we also have our secondary goals, which you were talking about, this social, social emotional, emotional or life skills right. um, that we're building in. And we have had an excellent partnership that we brought to Westfield um, with Springfield College professors um, Al, Albert Pettipa and uh, T Ted France. Ted France. Yeah. And um, they are, they are um, have been part of the uh, Positive Youth Development Program over at uh, uh, Springfield College. And what's been really what a exciting. great school, by the way. That I just want to throw great, that in. That there. is a great school. Where'd you, where'd you go I, to school? That was my undergrad. That's oh, my and, alma mater. Oh, not yeah, only, well, not yeah. only, you also studied um, physical education. I was a physical education uh, major at Springfield. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> what Chris would agree with, and what. Albert Pettibon and Ted France would also agree with is that if only the gym teachers could run the world, these kids would be really prepared for You're the You're not getting any argument from me, pal. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> so in that way, we've been working with the staff a lot around how do we support, you know, building the, the uh, students' um, social-emotional skill set. But one of the most crucial pieces to that is um, working with them to understand how to build effective mentoring relationships with kids. And... Um, so the, you know, working in a vocational environment is a great opportunity to build a mentor. I mean, it's based on mentorship or apprenticeship. It really is, actually. And, and just, again, I was a principal here, I can tell you, the shop teachers are as much as a teacher as they are a mentor to these kids. Absolutely. Because of the amount of time they, they spend with them, it's, you know, it's 32 hours a week. Yeah. Uh, every other week. So they right. get to know them. And um, just seeing those relationships develop is very positive. So anytime we can get those kinds of relationships on any level is very beneficial to all of our kids. And so one of the things we've been working on is how do we actually train staff to establish those relationships? Right. And, and what's the, we call it the special sauce. Right. Well, no, it, it, it's more critical. Listen, when we were kids, that wasn't necessarily as important as it is today. I mean, it it's, really, it's it, huge. It really is. Well, well, the research is there to say that, you know, the really what's going to support these kids' development is having at least one trusted, trusted adult. adult. 
and where, wherever they get that, wherever they get it, and, and definitely we might know a few things about mentoring programs. Yes, right? we, yes, yeah. we do. Absolutely. So, so we do. We we have developed trainings around that, um, but then also connecting that. And the other piece is how do we then we call it seamlessly integrate life skill um, support. So as they're as they're working to as they're struggling building, what's the, something that they do? Build a uh, trebuchet. Trebuchet. What's a trebuchet well, anyway? Oh boy, not, thanks for putting me on the spot. But um, it's. It, Make a long story short, it's like a, like a mini uh, like a mini catapult almost. Oh, you know, that's what I was that's a say. projectile. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, but we the, it's the a kid, medieval siege device. Is yes. what it is. Yes. <laughs> that's, right. uh, yeah. that's what they're teaching these kids today. And um, but through that, I mean, the kids are going to go through the process of trying to design it and come up with better designs. And then as they deal with the the, the challenge of that, you make these connections to their other parts of their life about how do you deal with when you're perseverance. getting perseverance, goal setting. Yeah. Um, and so we also work with the staff. Grit. to build the grit but also communication skills yes. collaboration how do you work together with somebody to accomplish a, a goal or a task yeah how, you do you, how do you let someone finish a sentence before interrupting well, you text yes. them don't you yes. send them a text <laughs> message is that how it goes you, you just i'm kidding well, i suppose that's i'm one way kidding to no. no but but in the, in it's the, the actually the interpersonal right, skills right, the right. contact is what we're trying to push because even though we have these devices and and people are that's becoming correct. more accustomed to you still have to interact with folks yep. and uh, working together as a team is critical to getting something complete i think Absolutely, and I think a big part that we're pushing, I mean, I, social-emotional learning has been, I'm sure you guys can talk about how much there's been a lot of attention to that for school systems to support those outcomes. And I've been working on this for years now, and I think that the, something exciting about the positive youth development model that we've been working with um, is that it really does focus on the kid's strength. It's a strength-based yes. model. We don't see kids as having a deficit. We don't see that, hey, these kids need more grit, so we're going to build more grit. Right. What we do is... <laughs> We see them as kids who have uh, you know, unlimited potential, and we're going to find their strengths and, and build them up. And so that's what we've been working with the staff and really creating a, um, an intentional model that does that. You know, we were talking about trebuchets before, and I just, our, the English classes here in grade 11, they do a medieval uh, yeah. period. And the kids are making, you know, at a vocational school, the kids get very creative. Absolutely. In the things that they have to build. Um, they built a battering ram, the kids from Carpentry, that probably <laughs> would tear down any door that you had. <laughs> and, and the trebuchet that the, one of the kids built, we were in the upper campus parking lot. So for anyone who has, that's the old Westfield High School, right? Anyone who has a reference of that, kids created trebuchets that fired things into Bowen's Field, Mr. Wow. Rogers. That's pretty impressive. Wow. So, you know, you want to you tell a, vo a vocational student to build something and they will build. <laughs> yep, uh, even the culinary kids were making food from the time period i mean it was it's great to see them using their skills that they're getting on the shop side in the academic side of the house too absolutely that's and, and that's where the stem program is a good a, a good fit Absol yeah. you know because yeah. it gives it gives kids hey you know this is maybe how i learn best you know yeah. or this is a way that's to how to i learn best I, I mean yep. absolutely um, yep. it's, you know it's no really, question it's fun stuff i mean you know we have this uh we came up with this phrase the other day, but what we really need to do for all of us, even as educators or as students, is we need to promote positive risk-taking behavior. Yes. And so Absolutely. the idea is... That Emphasis on the word positive. Yeah. That's right. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Positive. <laughs> Absolutely. Risk. But, you know, risk-taking is an important part of learning and getting out of your comfort zone. It really is. an is. important part of, yep. of teaching. So, you know, these are the types of skill sets that we, we bring about. But all, you know, really seeing that STEM, not only is it an important subject matter. I mean, from my vantage point, I've always just been so excited about STEM. You know, there's just so many things to get excited about, curiosity. Um, so it's a great uh, you know, venue to engage kids in lots of other types of learning. Math, Absolutely. literacy, social, emotional learning. All right, we're going to take uh, a break in a few seconds, but I just wanted to, I feel like I've been here every day, Pete, because Tuesday I was with Ken for a couple hours. Yesterday we had our volunteers in public schools uh, brunch, which was outstanding. And while I'm on that, I just want to say that Westfield Public Schools, we like to thank our volunteers in public schools. Uh, they were recognized yesterday for completing 7,764 hours of community service this year alone wow. throughout the district, right? Wow. So thank you for making our schools a better place for our students to learn. And I also I also wanted to congratulate volunteer Mary Lou Hatton, who was recognized with the 2018 Virginia Trella Unsung Hero Award. Uh, she was at Franklin Avenue That's in Mrs. Awesome. Bard's first uh, first grade class for her decade of service to Westfield Public Schools is appreciated. So that's very, very uh, exciting. It was a great day here yesterday, uh, and the food was always outstanding. And then I just want to remind folks, Monday, June 4th, so that's next Monday uh, at 7 p.m., uh, there's a free inspirational concert to benefit the displaced Powder Mill Fire families. Um, again, uh, 
There was a fire there April 22nd. 21 families or 53 people lost their homes. So this benefit concert is going to feature Shea Braceland and the Dan Kane Singers. It's going to be at Our Lady of Blessed Sacrament Church on 127 Hoyoke Road in Westfield. 100% of the proceeds for the donations will be going to the families. And I just want to, uh, I don't know if a lot of people know this as well, but we did a collection too, Chris, right? We did. And we that did. involved the city of Westfield and Westfield Gas and Electric and Westfield Public Schools. And we had a couple of dress down days and we were able to collect about $4,300 as a group that, and that went out to gift cards to all yeah, the families pretty, that you took care of last yeah, week, right? Yeah, it was right? pretty amazing. Um, we delivered the the gift cards to the schools last week for then the schools in turn will deliver them or you know parents will come in and pick them up but every family got about three hundred and fifty dollars every family right. got three hundred and fifty dollars of gift cards it was just an incredible show of generosity and um, it just shows you what our community does this community is outstanding it so is. it is 9 43 thanks for listening to superintendent spotlight we'll be back after the break Hello! Hello! We are They Might Be Giants. And we want to welcome you to our musical laboratory. As the philosopher Rudolf Carnap once so clearly said, <clears throat> Science is a system of statements based on direct experience and controlled by experimental verification. Or as we say, science is real. Science is real. From the Big Bang to DNA, science is real. From evolution to the Milky Way, I like the stories about angels, unicorns, and elves. Now I like the stories as much as anybody else. But when I'm seeking knowledge, either simple or abstract. The facts are with science. The facts are with science. Science is real. Science is real. Science is real. Science is real. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Commercial Distributing Company of Westfield. Now in its third generation of family ownership, Commercial is one of the premier beverage distributors of Western Massachusetts. The Playsick family and the staff of Commercial Distributing wishes you good times throughout the year and urges you to drink responsibly. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Dunkin' Donut Shops of Westfield and the Sardinia family. It's nice to know that even as the world changes, Dunkin' Coffee remains the same at seven convenient locations throughout Westfield. We thank the generosity of our underwriters. For more information, please contact the Westfield State Foundation at 413-572-8646. Wednesday mornings start off right from 6 to 8 a.m. with Tina Gorman and Wake Up Wednesday. Community Radio 89.5 WSKB. Live from the campus of Westfield State University, this is 89.5 FM WSKB Westfield. And we're back with Superintendent Spotlight. I, no, no sports theme no this sports morning? music, Pete? Uh, I, I forgot to load it up. Okay, I was going to say, because I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. Yeah, it's like, a, no problem, no problem. We can on, do it no, anyway. I, I can, I can so, zip it in here. Folks, just a, uh, you know, an update on, on, on local sports. Just want to congratulate. There it is. Oh, oh there we better go. Better late than never. That's okay. okay. Yeah. Want to congratulate Tri-County South League champion Westfield Technical Academy Tigers. Boys high school baseball team defeated Old Colony Regional Voke Tech 
out of Rochester, Mass, five to three, even though they were no hit what? yesterday. What? In Hell, the, what? <laughs> how does right. that happen? How does that happen? Right. This is in the small school vocational tournament. That's yeah. a lot of, um, They a lot were of on the road. Yes. <laughs> Square, yeah, yeah. <laughs> scoreless game for four innings, but they got three in the top of the fifth, a couple of insurance runs in the sixth. Um, their starting pitching was great um, with uh, seven sh- seven complete innings. Um, really a- a- an interesting game, though. You get you get no hit, and you still score five runs, and you win. Incredible, right. incredible. They'll take it. They're playing someone next. Yeah, right? they are. Um, they're going to take on um, McCann. McCann Tech yep. in that small school's Volk Tourney Finals at Joe Wolf Stadium in North Adams. Tentatively this Monday, time to be announced. So congratulations, announced. boys. Speaking of boys baseball, Westfield High starting to play much, much better ball of late. They're they up are. to 12 and 6. Girls softball team, Westfield High at 9 and 10. So they're one win away from making the tournament. Westfield Tech girls, they're, they're 7 and 6. 7 and 6 yeah. could be tournament bound. Our boys lacrosse team at the high school at 9 and 4. Girls lacrosse at 10 and 7. Um, Yesterday, uh, we, we did say Westfield High was playing well, but they did get beat by DeConnick 6 uh, 1 yesterday. Softball also lost to Cy Tech yesterday, but we've got some upcoming games today. Right. Boys Varsity Track, they're at the All State Meet, Pentathlon, and, and Pole Vault at Fitchburg State at 2 o'clock. Uh, girls Varsity Track, same thing at Fitchburg State. Um, and Saturday is Boys Varsity Track and Girls Varsity Track, that's the All State Meet at, F- at Fitchburg. And for the Tech Academy, again, that small school Volk tournament number three Westfield Tech against number, number one, one McCann, McCann Tech again that's McCann's Monday tough, I'm going to be honest Times with to you be announced. they are you McCann know is but a, a lot of team. credit to our boys their one went away from that um and you know NBA finals opens tonight Cavaliers taking on Golden State my son who's a Golden State fan was sweating out the last two games of that yeah Western Conference finals um NHL finals though tied 1-1 as the Capitals did defeat the Golden Knights last night 3-2 game three Saturday Vegas at Washington uh, and Pete weekly, I have one comment about ba- uh, basketball and, and sure. hockey at this point oh my god who the hell Oh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Celtics are out. You know? Celtics, the Bruins are out. The Celtics are out. <laughs> Bruins we're, are out. We're well, New England fans. You know, well, we, we do just, that. You know, it's, <laughs> um, so getting back to those New England fans, um, Red Sox still sitting on top of the AL East this week, two games ahead of our beloved Bronx Primers. Because they've played four more games than us, Well, right? they, yeah, but, and, they, and give them credit. They've won all four of those games. What will be interesting now. <laughs> <laughs> nip and tuck. Nip and tuck. No, it is. And, and, but, you know, the schedule's... So far, we've talked about this before. The Yanks have had, uh, they've already finished their season series with the world champion Astros. They won yeah. five of those seven games, I and, might and add. Who's Boston playing? Like Baltimore? And Every other game is Baltimore, playing the Toronto, Astros and tonight? Tampa Bay. Yeah. Right. Sox, <laughs> Sox She's go, just saying. Right. Sox go to Houston tonight. Yanks get Baltimore now they're playing. So it, there we go. Know, yeah. The nice thing is, out. I get to listen yeah. to Dare Arnold call the game tonight for oh. WEI. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Joe is Joe is going to his fiftieth college, re- high school or college reunion. Wow! So it'll be wow. Dale Arnold and I think Roger Clemens is going to call t- tonight or tomorrow night's oh, game. Really? That's fantastic! Yeah, that's awesome. So, like you said, nip and tuck all season oh, long. Yeah. Um, At least both teams are, are are competitive. There was years where the Yankees were not very good, and there were years where the oh, Red Sox were not very good. Where the Red Sox weren't very good either. Decades. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, manage, that Bobby Valentine management. year wasn't yeah. that, that? That was a good one for the yeah, Red now, Sox. Now he's, now he's running sports bars. <laughs> yes, he, well, and, and college <laughs> and college sports programs. He didn't last very long. But yeah, the Yankees are doing are doing well. I think they have the most home runs in the in baseball. They do most runs scored, highest slugging. Yeah. we could go on and on. We need another pitcher. We need another pitcher. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need another pitcher. We need a starting pitcher over there. We need another starter. Yeah. Go Sox? No. <laughs> right, exactly. No, it's, no, no, no. We're, we're, it's a draw this week. Usually you two are outnumbered, but it's yeah. a draw this two week. Two to right. two. Two to two. So, All right, we got yeah, one. Yeah, we're almost yeah, done. So it's unbelievable. Um, you know, speaking of almost done, was saying, you know, during the break, I was telling Brian, our guest this week, uh, Brian King, director of uh, CLASP, Connected Learning and After School and Summer Partnership, who does work very collaborative with Westfield Public Schools. I was just telling Brian that um, we're way ahead of the game this year in terms of um, student registration. Um, we we pretty oh, that's we, good we, we know too. who our program well well we, we and you've hired teachers we too, did staff? yeah All right. fully staffed you know we basically we sped up our timelines because of the transition um, but right now. It looks like, you know, we'll have probably when it's all said and done about 250 rising um, K to, K to uh, wow. six students, 
attending our summer program at Highland, and we'll have another 55 or so rising 7th and 8th graders. Actually, when actually I take that back. When it's all said and done, probably closer to 70 um, students attending our rising uh, middle school summer program. So when you, when you do the math, you know, that's over 300 students that are going to have another month of school um, that's all possible through CLASP and, and through Title I. Well, not another Title month III. of school, if all goes according to plan. It would be more, it would be like a summer camp experience. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But they're, they're going to be, you know, they're going to be getting opportunities. Another month of fun. fun. That's right. Another month right. of fun. That's right. Absolutely. So, yeah. And, you know, and it is. I mean, if, if anybody is, um, one, one of the things we hear from uh, when we survey our kids yeah. and we survey our parents at the end of every program and the teachers themselves, the feedback is always overwhelmingly positive. And there's waiting. We, we literally have, folks that don't know, in the Title I office, we have waiting lists of kids that want to do this. That want to do Well, this. and you guys do a survey of the students yeah. after they end, and I just remember we're looking through the results because yeah. you sent them to me last, last year. year. Outstanding. Oh. I mean, yeah. the, the kids that I've, I've forwarded to school committee, and just so they can see the positive feedback from the students. I mean, it's not right. just the staff, oh, but it's the, kids. the kids are getting a lot out of it. And listen, had you told me at that age, oh, you want to go to have f school, school, but fun in the summer, right. my answer would have been, no, thank you. You know, and, and these kids are excited, and they're looking forward to it, and they enjoy the experience, yeah. and that's what it makes it even well, better. They so they're learning. Yeah, and they're Spend a lot of times outside. You guys have some great places to explore. They're Absolutely. in the ponds, they're yeah. in the fields, they're in the forests. They're out there. Well, and, and I mean, even, you know, you, you've come to visit the program before, too, and you've worked with our staff and you've, you've observed, like, the hands-on aspect of it. And for a lot of our kids, this, this foray into nature is not something that they do on a regular basis. Right. So <laughs> when they're out in the woods or they're out by the pond or they're seeing you know, nature um, in its purest form and they're, and they're, you know, doing experiments with, with tadpoles and yeah. they're, and they're checking out the, the life cycle of this or that, or, or they're, or just the, trying to catch a frog, right? The right. flora and the fauna, right? It's, 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 it's incredible to them. It's, it opens up a whole it world does. that, that some of them just don't have the, the, the hands-on prior knowledge and experience. Well, and to be fair, we're in an, an era of technology. That's and, right. And kids and adults are more sometimes interested in that than they are in going outside. So uh, this kind of makes you go outside. Yes, it yeah, does. Yeah, it's true. And also remind everyone, though, it's also, you know, parents are a lot more cautious. Going outside is dangerous. You've got ticks and mosquitoes oh, and, yeah. and fears of lots of things. So we talk a lot about that, too. But there, we do have to make an effort to get all of us outdoors. Right. Um, and so it is a great opportunity to, to do that. And it's an and I think it's really important. I, I think that, you know, if we stop going outdoors and we stop learning outdoors, we've we've done ourselves in. I agree. And, and our middle school students take it to another level. They, right. They're they're doing service learning, but they're also in kayaks. You know, they're going fishing. Well, yeah. Like we're. And we, also a call out to um. So also a partnership that we've developed with uh, the school and with uh, the YMCA. YMCA. Right. Yeah. Um, and their Camp Shepherd, where the kids go to Camp Shepherd for um, field trips, and they do climbing, and they do ponding, and they do boating. And that's another great example of, you know, coordinating community efforts. Chris, you had mentioned something. You, were, you gave all the acronyms before, but you, you mentioned DIBBLES in terms yeah. of testing, and you didn't really get into that. And I don't know if a lot of folks know what that sure. is, so I was hoping you could explain it. I will, but, if you, but before I do, Brian, Brian reminded me that it's not just Westfield Public Schools and CLASP working together. I really, we really do need to shout out YMCA and Camp yep. Shepherd. Boys also the yeah. Boys and Girls yep. Club, yep. the partnership we have with them. Um, and, and our food services yep. department, which is a very unheralded. Shout out to Super Super Tola. Tola. Yeah, It's an unheralded yep. department. They don't get a lot of fanfare. But the work that they do to help us with these summer programs, too, um, I'm just very, very thankful to, to all of our community partners. Um, but we do give our kids um, an assessment, a pre and post assessment in the summer to measure um, growth, you know, to see if they're if they're reading fluency. Um, con continues to stay where it is or to move a little bit forward. And the, the Dibbles is a, um, and I'm not going to go into the D-I-B-E-S because I don't know the whole thing, <laughs> but um, it, it's a, it, it really, it, it's a, it's a norm-referenced, research-based assessment that we give our students in all of our elementary what is it schools. Assess? 
um, flu fluency um, and accuracy. So yeah, we, much we do an assessment that, that does the fluency in terms of how many words are they reading okay. how quickly. Per minute. Also the accuracy, how many words are they getting correct out of how many words they read. Right. We measure for how they, when they're reading out loud, are they reading with expression? So are they pulling meaning while they're reading? Okay. We also uh, measure comprehension in two, two different ways. And that's where we're seeing growth, correct? Right. I just wanted yes. to make that point. I want our listeners to understand in, that. In we do that in grades um, right. K through 5 right now, next year K through 6 right now. We do that anyway do in that our in, schools. Right. But we take it a step. Um, we take it a step further in our summer program. And what's also too. important about that data is not only just to measure our outcomes. We're also using that to support instruction in the summer. In, in the summer, because yep. the summer, all these kids are coming from different elementary schools into one pile, and a lot of the teachers, uh, you know, they're, they're new. And they don't know these kids. So, so although they get school data, they're also getting current, fresh data on these other right. skill sets. And then we can in design instruction for both individual and group instruction through that. Absolutely, absolutely, and and and, I, and again, Brian, I just want to thank you too and CLASP and the organization for um, our continued partnership. We, we we work really well together. Um, the staff appreciates it, um, and um, you know our programs are our programs are a big success, and I, I I just hope we can continue to keep that that moving forward. Right, Colin, very much. You know. Thank you, guys. Thank you for and thank you for being on the show. Listen, we got a busy week next week too, uh, Mr. Rogers. I just want to call that out. Monday night we have school committee. There's also that uh, the the event that I talked about in t at uh, the church for the uh, victims of of powder mill of uh, the fire there. And then we've got uh, Wednesday night is the National Junior Honor Society induction at South Middle School, um, the last one at South Middle School because from here on out it'll be Westfield Middle School. That's and correct. Then Thursday night we have uh, graduation here for Westfield Technical. Academy from 7, usually goes to about 8.15, and then Friday night there's graduation for Westfield High School. Pete, any idea of the weather for next Thursday or Friday? Fingers crossed, doesn't yeah. rain. Uh, yeah, right now it looks okay, but that's, we're still so far out. We're still out. so far out, but I want, you know, I, I um, people ask, will they be inside or outside, and I just want folks to know, I would always try to have graduation outside Correct. when possible, because uh, students can bring as many family members and right. relatives as they want to have when they have it outside. When it is inside, first of all, it's hot, uh, but you know, you can only two guests, four, or two yeah, to four guests yeah. depending on where you are. Right. Because the, the high school would have it in the gymnasium over there and there's limited seating and so then I think it's two. Here you can sit 700 so at least, right. you know, you can fit a little bit more. Uh, but what, you know, what, what do you got on there? Well, Does it say it just says, so far? It says, I mean, next Thursday looks like partly cloudy in 63 next friday looks like cloudy in 71 so again like pete said we're a week away but at the very least we'll take um it. that the temperature wise it's if not, yeah, not yeah, going to snow right but, well, we had, yeah. <laughs> but temperature wise if we were in the 70s for graduation that that's would be actually phenomenal. perfect yeah, right? that'd be perfect, perfect. Yeah. right you don't want 90s no that's no that's we've brutal. been there done that before and you don't want snow no we don't <laughs> No. So um, <laughs> next week we have our guest is going to be Pete Coles. How about that? We're going to talk about we're going to talk about the TV and radio shop that's awesome. going to be starting here in September. And we're going to be grill. on the boards. But yes, yeah, we get to grill Pete. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. Uh, and then the 14th we're back and we have uh, Paul Newton. He's going to wrap up the year on South Middle School and probably talk to us a little bit about, about what Westfield next Middle School Westfield will look like. Middle, yeah. Right. And then we have a show on the 21st and a show on the 28th. So unbelievable. And then our year is over. That's year two of superintendent spotlight and Mr. i think Rogers. i think the professional practice goal for year three would be to actually have the two co-hosts together every time every, more often than not more often than, than not. not hey could you could you do a uh, roving session in the summer you know do a little report on the summer programs oh absolutely we could we could i don't have a problem with that i don't we either do that. that'd be cool oh that'd then we'll be great. do a show over the summer too we'll do a show over the summer yeah, okay, we have summer kids though we i want to talk to kids yeah, yeah. Talking to say, kids. we can do it live maybe from one of the sites yeah and talk to kids yeah uh -oh. i don't have a problem with that We're great cool. um have, all right have gear will travel have gear will travel <laughs> All right, folks, again, thanks for listening. It's 10 o'clock. That's it for us. You're listening to Superintendent Spotlight. Please catch us next week from 9 to 10. With Have Pete a great Coles. week, everybody. Thanks.